Hi guys, just a really quick video. Um, for the sake of curiosity, I wanted to know if I could fit the run cam split I've just received um, into my Legioro S4L Extreme Edition, um, based on the frame I reviewed and really liked um, a few weeks ago. Um, as you can see, I've got the uh, run cam fitted and I've also got the, the separate Wi-Fi module on the side. And I don't know how much you can see because the light's not great at the moment. But basically I've got three stacks. I've got a 20 by 20 4 in 1 ESC. I've got um, a HGL, HGLRC F4 Flame flight controller. And I've got the run cam split on top. Now, the reason I use this flight controller is A, I had it to hand, and B, the problem with the run cam split is it, it draws a lot of amps, um, 650 milliamp. And the problem is a lot of flight controllers, certainly the small ones, the 20 by 20 size, um, basically the back on them, their voltage regulator is only rated to one amp. So if you run the split, VTX, bits and bobs off it, chances are you, that regulator is going to fail um, and your flight controller will either reset or, or burn out and it will run very hot. So that's the reason why I use a full, full sized flight controller because I think the back on this is rated to two or three amps. Um, the DYSF4 that I usually use on a lot of my builds is rated to 3 amps, so it nicely gets around the issue of this run cam split pulling too many amps. Now, to get the split to fit into the Legero frame, what I've had to do is reverse the camera mount, and as you can see, this hole here is usually where you would mount your camera, and it would usually be on this side. Um, so basically all I've done is flipped over the um, camera plate, drilled a tiny little hole about 6mm higher up and then mounted the camera itself on its middle hole. Now there, there are pros and cons to what I've done. Um, the really really good thing, if I just get this top plate and pretend we drop it in it's not attached properly. I've done it this way, um, and if you run kind of 40 degree, sorry you can't see it, if you run about a 40 degree camera angle, you don't get any props or top plate into view, which is fantastic. That's the one major issue um, of the run cam split with the shorter lens. Um, and I've tested this and it's it's absolutely fine. So providing you're, you're comfortable flying at a, a high camera angle of 35, 40 degrees, you're going to be absolutely fine doing this method um, and especially on a super light you tend to run with a higher camera angle anyway because you've got less forward momentum because of the weight difference um, and because it's so light. The other perk on this particular frame is because on the Extreme Edition it's really light and the top plate is slightly thinner than the standard Legiro, it actually allows you to take off and remove the Wi-Fi module whenever you want. Um, which nicely gets around the fact that if you want to use the USB, you really haven't got a cat in hell's chance of. Uh, sorry, the uh, if you want to use the SD card, you really haven't got a cat in hell chance of, uh, of getting it out on this particular small frame. But I'm more than happy for that SD card to just stay in there, and I can just pull my images off via the Wi-Fi unit or via the USB port if I so choose to do so. Um, the one downside of this is the camera plate, as you can see, is longer this way than it is this way. So when you swing it around, it doesn't quite fit perfectly into the top plates, but it's not much of a wiggle to get them in. Um, so it does actually, and once it's, once it's locked in place, um, it's absolutely fine. Now, having built this, I don't know whether I'm going to keep it like this. Because the other way to do this would be, if you can see here, when the camera plate's on, there's not much space between the run cam and, sorry, the run cam camera module and the board itself. And that limits your camera angle to probably maybe 50 degrees, 45, 50 degrees. I don't particularly like how tight the whole thing is. So what I might try and do is remove 
and the normal sized flight controller put the split on the very bottom on the next stack put a 20x20 20 20 4-in-1 ESC and then on the top stack put a 20x20 20 20 flight controller and because those flight controllers as I said tend to have weak voltage reg regulators what I might do is use this little guy which is a Diatone 5 volt um, voltage regulator and I might attach this to um, the battery connectors give it the full volt of the, ba of the, uh, the battery well, of course this will filter through and give me 5 volts on the other side and I can use that 5 volts to power the split and get around any issues with uh, the flight controller overheating or, or uh, the split drawing too many amps from it. So that's another alternative. I suspect that using this, because it's relatively small, I mean you can see if I put it on here how small it actually is. It might actually make for a cleaner build and probably a lighter build actually. Um, so that's something yeah, that's something I'm probably going to do. I'm not massively happy with this at the moment. Not because it doesn't fit, but because I'm so used to having such a low, clean stack where you use separate ESCs and just have one board here. This whole thing is a little bit messy for my liking. Um, bit of OSD, probably uh, OCD kicking in there, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm just not massively keen on the setup. As you can see, I've had to run the cable round and under the board because I've had to use the, basically mount the split with the, the cable at the bottom. And the reason why I had to do that, if you can see, the reason why I had to do that is if I turn it the other way around, it hits the, um, the, the, the board itself. So now, I have, I have tried this um, only in the, the, the garage, um, and basically it works absolutely fine, um, other than the fact that I've just pulled off my screw. The one thing I would say is, if you're going to do this, what you need are, and as you can see I haven't, you probably need um, some sort of 7 or 8mm M2 screws, and you're going to need a spacer and uh, probably a, a, a soft mount of some sort inside. And basically that will allow you to get a good grip of the camera and remove any vibration. But as I said, I've run this in the garage I don't get any props or um, or top plate in view and obviously the more you lower the camera angle from 40 degrees the more um, you'll start to see those props appear in the bottom of your bottom of your goggles um, so I'm hoping this this works really well because I'm not happy with this build um, my plan was to take this on holiday but I think just to test it I'm just going to drop this into um, in, into a bigger quad the, the 5 inch Legero S5 that I'm building um, just to try it out and I'll order um, a 20 by 20 uh, flight controller just to uh, just to change it over. But but yeah, in answer to a few people's questions, you can do it. Um, it's pretty straightforward to do, um, but it might be better using a separate back and uh, a smaller flight controller, and then just mount it in reverse. That way, you've got a lot more space around here um, for, to move your camera up and down, etc. Um, anyway. Hope that was useful. Um, as I said, I'm going on holiday for a week. Um, hopefully I can take one of my quads with me and get some decent flight footage. Um, but other than that, I shall see you when I do. Cheers guys, thanks, bye.